and then we'll use the bucket and the spade for um, any fine detailing work. Good right, morning everyone, welcome back to the big barn build. Today we're making a big hole in the ground, a little bit more glamorous. We're lining it, uh, it's a big slab as well with lots of steel reinforcing. So stick around and we'll see how we get on. So we've managed to get the DPM in. Uh, we've now got to get all the mesh down there. We obviously can't just chuck the mesh into the hole now because it would just rip all of that plastic. So we're going to see if we can bring them around with the telehandler whilst we've got it all the way around the outside of the barn and drop them at the far end and then we can lift them in because they're quite heavy. I think they're about 70 kilo a piece and they're the full size sheets of 4.8 meters by 2.4. What that means is you can't lie them flat on the forks. I don't know what you would do on a site, maybe some sort of hook going through them, um, but they're all split. They're not in a pack. So we can't lie them this way. What I'm thinking is we'll lift the forks up and try and slot them onto it and then hope we can drive, lift everything up high enough to get all the way around and drop them off down there. That's the plan. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be those that quad fork attachment just doesn't line up with the sensors so I think they're wide enough we should be okay Well, that was a success. So we've got all the panels around now, the mesh panels. There's two up there. One of those needs to go in first, it's a bit bent. So we're gonna get the bottom ones on 40 mil chairs. Uh, once they're down, we can then wire in our spaces. They're like continuous wire chairs, uh, which are 150 mil tall. And then we should then end up with the second layer of rebar ending up 40 mil below the top because that's the spec that we've been given. All right, the mesh is in and it's only half of it. So this is a393, we've got to have two layers of it. Um, Tom is tying these together now on all the laps. We've gone either 400 mil or more because it made sense to not have to cut sheets. And we're trying not to crush these spaces. So these are in on the 40 mil setting. So we know we're off um, from the DPM plenty. And then we've got these guys here, which are, they're called a chair as well, but continuous chair and that's going to stand the next layer of exactly the same mesh but up here and we've got plenty of those so we're going to put them about every meter and hopefully not have to cut them Will we fit two side by side you see how strong they are for the thin wire quite you got two there haven't you yeah you don't have to splay them out do you they look a bit crushed 
Oh, made to measure. Much better than tied by hand. Snap. Yeah. Don't edit it. Joe, don't use this one. <laughs> Sorry, the concrete crew are arriving in uh, never, <laughs> never o'clock. This is definitely the sort of job where you see sick people on it. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be all right though. All right, steel is all prepped up. We're just going to do a little bit of clearing to get access there. So while we're, our priority is getting that corner done, we're going to be two cube or, or maybe just under that over. So we've got last little footing to go in at the end there. And this porch is about two meters in and 3.6 meters long. So we're going to dig that. Hopefully the lorry will then come in and we'll be this side and we can shoot it over the top into the dumper we'll go around finish the pool and what we've got left we'll do that we'll do that yes i realize i've now got the dumper stuck inside the building so that means it'll be definitely doing the whole concrete pour from inside we're going to bring the concrete truck to here and then fill up the other side but we were thinking about filling the slab from the other side that's not going to happen anymore uh, but anyway we're a uh, full dumper load so what Tom's realized is if we get our shutter in pulled off the back we can actually use this to start backfilling the south wall and by the looks of it, plywood is coming off. So that's all the bracing off. Is she gonna peel? Oh. So a lot of people use peeling agents, or re sorry, release agents, um, or wax boards up and things like that. But I think that's probably if you're using the same boards again and again. Of course, we wanna use these for other shuttering tasks. So if we can get them off without breaking them, that'd be ideal. Uh, we did put a couple. Well, this is what it's like, and we just realised that. So we did two pours, and we also had. Or is it probably only a cube, wasn't it? Like yeah. an extra meter or two of concrete on a pour that we were doing elsewhere. And we just tipped it in, but we didn't vibrate that one because it was just a tiny bit. And you can see this is the bottom one, which we did use the poker in. Top one yesterday or Tuesday, whenever it was that we did. And then this is the bit we didn't. So it did do its job. Right, as some of you might know, after last week's dilemma of having a concrete lorry meant to be turning up then it didn't turn up and then it rescheduled and then yeah we, we avoided a disaster basically because we didn't have we weren't ready for it we'd done a really good shift at getting the uh, mesh sorted so we've got a double layered mesh here all on the chairs that was all going to plan and then we just hadn't left ourselves enough time and materials to get all the uprights in and probably underestimated that so we've got low more 10 mil bar arriving today we basically cleared out bradford's uh, stock so we've got I think 50 or so six meter lengths coming and what we need to do is make up the bars that are going to sit inside our ICF walls so a bit of background we are pouring the slab for a swimming pool 
um, which is a bit of a mythical project because it won't be finished for some years, but we're trying to get the groundwork stage done while we can and while we've got good access. So we've got a 250 mil slab to go in here, hence all the steel. And there's many walls that are built off that slab, obviously including the swimming pool walls themselves. And part of the retaining sort of nature of that wall in the core of the ICF, which are the insulated blocks that we're using, uh, we need to have vertical steels. There'll also be horizontal steels as well. Fortunately, because the outside is fully backfilled, we, we've just got one single row of steelwork on three walls. The other end is even more steel. Every 200 mil, we need to have an L steel bent. So it's tied at the bottom there, comes up and then carries up all the way through the block work. And because all of our mesh spacings are at 200 mil, that gives us a nice guide to go off we're actually using the bottom they don't line up perfectly we're using the bottom one so it's tied to that and then we will kind of make these a little bit more straight and uh, brace them uh before the pour and then like a bit of a modern art installation we've got all these caps on to save us turning into human kebabs but we're going to um do all that all the way around and then hopefully we're going to get the dumper close enough to pour over because we're cheapskates and we're not getting a pump in we've got fairly good access so we think we can manage and we'll just work our way across and hope for the best. So we're just waiting now on the lorry and then as soon as it gets here, Tom made up a bit of a jig this morning so hopefully we'll just get them all cut to length and uh, bent and fixed and secured in place. We've got two hours to do it. Hurrah, we're in business. I slowly stop. Oh. I know we shouldn't stop, but... No, it's just started. Okay. I bet in like a foundry or wherever they make them, they just get twisted. Gone. Yeah, so it just needs like three little knuckles. Yeah, bend it. And I bet they've got big shears and hydraulic. So this is what we're aiming for. Two metre section, bent with a 400 leg and a 1600 high bit minus whatever this loss in the radius but close enough to the top and this is the famous contraption i'm looking forward to the demonstration it goes in there like that bit of force he's selling the plans here. slide that out <coughs> little nick yeah it means you, you've got to tie them as quick as i cut them oh <laughs> well give me catch up time it's, we're enjoying having a roof because it's about 10 degrees cooler under the roof today. We would be frazzled out here. Although I'm gonna have to work the other end. Oh, have I got my uh, twisty twizzler? My bacon twizzler. So this is what we're using. I've not really done much of this before. I must admit, I think I've probably used cable ties in the past for the odd bit of steel work. But these are rebar ties. You can get them on a reel or you can get a tool and you can get a cordless tool and all that sort of stuff. But these ones, got a hoop each end, put them round and then I'll show you the tool we're gonna use to bind them up. Right, we got to here. This is what we need. So it's pretty inexpensive. A lot of time you get the little cheap ties on one of these and, and you're away. Pops your uncle.
All right, just checking what we've got left. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're getting three out of each. All of that single run now is all in at 200 centers. Tom started that end, so he's got, so this end basically ends up with a swimming pool this side and a void this side, because there's gonna be a access void underneath the floor level there and then plant room outside as well. So what we wanted to do is rather than hide all the fittings and, and pipes and things like that with no access, we're gonna keep that as a sort of crawl space almost. So you can come through the outside wall into that void and access bits on the back side of the pool. What you need to think about when you're doing the structural side of it, well, what my structural engineer needs to think about is there will be some instances where you've got backfill and pressure pushing in on the pool. For instance, the majority of these walls, and that will be at occasions when the pool is empty, i.e. for the next year or two. Um, so you have to have the, the correct reinforcement for that. If you only had water on the inside, but nothing on the outside, then you would need slightly different positioning on your reinforcement and two rows. That's what we've done that end. Um, and for that reason, we switched these three back to a single row because we know we're going to have a full fill back mix. We can um, backfill. We can backfill with a lean concrete mix in that small void behind. This end's got the trench blocks which come up to build the bedroom wall on. Uh, whereas the other end, because there will be that that constant difference, there'll be some occasions where there's nothing either side fine but then there'll be other occasions where there's a full pool and nothing the other side on on the outside so that's why we had to do a double row up there it's a bit of a headache but at least it's done it's not the most expensive thing this rebar but it's fussy and it takes time and you can get all these l's made up i think it was a 10 working day or a week or so to get done but we didn't have that so we thought well keep going and we'll just bought the steel and as you saw it was pretty quick to bend this is only 10 mil steel so it's quite easy to bend by hand we got a more accurate bend in the workshop with the big metal vice but the the radius that we're getting on these is absolutely fine when you're overlapping the the steel you typically are aiming for for 40 times the width so for us if we've got a 10 mil steel we need a 400 mil overlap and that's usually more commonly known uh, for when you're doing the mesh sheet. So when we lay out the whole slab, we will need to make sure that all of our sheets overlap each other by 400 mil, or if it's the sheets, uh, the mesh sheets, I think we're using are eight mil, so it'd be slightly less. Um, however, 400 mil is quite handy because it's just two squares. So like we've done on these, although that one's slightly staggered, these ones are all overlapped, double, double, and you know we've got a 400 overlap or more. There's 600 there because we didn't want to cut the sheets because it didn't make sense to. Right, concrete board tomorrow. So, gone to see some friends, see what tools I can snag for the day. Okay, and if we just did a hand tamp, we'd just tamp, yeah. go for one of these. Literally, basically about. They're about four meters, aren't they? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Actually, about top one is probably about. 3.6 meters probably. Yeah. And then one below it's slightly longer, so just cover here. There you go. Right, what we're gonna do is we've got the ball float, which I think I've got two heads for it, so I think that's gonna be enough. Rather than trying to get a power float down in that pool where we don't actually need it super smooth. I mean we can get it pretty smooth with this. Uh, we're gonna use the mag float on here, then the we'll we'll screed bar it with a timber screed. We'll find something that's straight. I can't really get anything in Joe's car. It doesn't need to, it just needs to be flattened level, this slab, but it's our trial. Um, so what we're gonna do this time is do it all by hand. What we're gonna, what's going on? What we're gonna do next time is use a vibrating, I think you call it a Magi screed, um, petrol thing with a long bar to actually screed and level the slab out. And then probably ball float it a bit, followed by a power float which is like a helicopter whacker whacker thing um but they don't have one of those and that would be a nightmare to get into the pool we'd have to lift it out with a digger and 
this is perfectly fine for what we need today or tomorrow. Joe's poor car. We'll use the bucket and the spade for um, any fine detailing work. And that's it, we're all set. We've got a little bit more steel work to do at the beginning of the next video. But before we leave here, let's just a little reminder of what Tom said to me earlier that day. I feel like it's gonna be all right though. I'll let you guess how our concrete port actually went, but that'll have to wait for another video. Thanks for watching. As always, remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.